problem in your life can be changed. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe tonight that no matter what you're going through, you serve a God that is so big that when you leave tonight, your problem can be taken care of? Amen. Amen. There's many needs on here that are sick. There, I know there's people here that are having problems in their life, maybe sickness, whatever it is, but we believe that God can touch you right where you are. So if we can, let's lift our voices in prayer right now. Jesus, you see needs that are in this building. God, we're asking that you would take care of each and every one of them. God, we're asking that you would touch, that you would heal, whatever the problem may be. We know that, God, that no problem is too big for you, but you can reach down, you can heal, that you can touch today, Jesus. We're believing for miracles to be performed, not just later on in the week, not just later on in the week, but right now. We believe we do not have to leave the same way. We believe we can leave change tonight by your name and by your power. We give you all the praise and all the glory. If you're believing for Jesus to do great things tonight, service, I wonder if we would put our hands together and lift our voices in Jesus' name. Love you, Jesus. We praise you. We serve a great God tonight. Hallelujah. You are good, God. Lord, you are good. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. Sing it. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good. Sing. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. and tongue from generation to generation we worship you Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Every nation and time, from generation, from generation oh, to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, 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 we worship you. Oh, who you are. We worship you. We worship you. You are good all the time, all the time. All the time. You are good, you are good, you are good all the time, all the time. All the time. You are good. Come on, somebody. You, you are, are good. good all the time, all the time. You are good. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good. Come on, lift it up. You are good all the time, all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good, you are good all the time, all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good, you are good all the time, all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good, you are good all the time, all the time, all the time. You are good. People from every nation and tongue, 
from generation to generation we worship you hallelujah 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 we worship you for who you are we worship you we worship you hallelujah 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 we worship you for who you are
Somebody needs to make the devil nervous tonight. Uh, let's praise the Lord. Sing holy, holy. You are holy, holy. You are holy, holy. Somebody tell Jesus. Let the praises rise. Holy, lift it up. Holy. You are holy, holy. You are holy, holy. Let the praises rise. Holy. Holy. You are holy, holy. You are holy, holy. Let the praises rise. Holy. You are holy, holy. You are holy, holy. Let the praises rise. Oh, come on and praise him one more time. How we love you, Jesus. Yeah. Come on, the Lord's in the house. Let's worship. Come on, give him some worship in this house. He don't know how you put your worship. He don't know what to Come on, he's a holy God. Let's worship him like he needs to be worshiped. You are holy. 
holy, you are holy, holy, you are holy, holy. Let the praises rise. Let the praises rise. Come on, lift your voice, sing. Holy, you are holy, holy, you are holy, holy. You are holy. Let the praises rise. Come on, you're very in your worship right now. Holy. You are holy, holy. You are holy, holy. Let the praises rise. Holy, you are holy, holy. You are holy, holy. Let the praises rise. Praise God. Come on. Let's love the Lord one more time. Let's give Him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, you are holy. What a holy God you are. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, what an awesome feel in the house right now. Something is about to happen. He inhabits the praises of your people. The Lord's inhabiting his praises right now. Whatever you have need of, it's here. All you got to do is reach out. God is wanting to do a lot of things tonight. Praise God. Praise God. He is so good. What an awesome God we serve. Come on. Come on. Worship. Come on. He's not done yet. He's not done yet. He's not done yet. Oh, God, receive our worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. serve a prayer answering God I'm going to share with you a miracle that just took place in this building tonight Josephine had surgery on a hand was unable to move fingers when she came into this room this evening I want you to lift that hand up and show everybody what God's done in this house stretch that hand out move them fingers around that's a testimony to the goodness of God I said he's still a healer our God is still on the throne <laughs> Hallelujah! We started an initiative today. It's called 100 in 100. People would say it's impossible for $100,000 to be raised in 100 hours. It's a pretty big feat for us to even say that's possible. We're talking about teenagers. We're talking about people that are doing good to have jobs, much less good paying jobs. Can I tell you, in two hours' time, $3,900 has already come in toward the $100,000 goal. I know we've not reached 100000 yet, but I think we ought to just pause a moment and just thank God for what he's doing. Because while we're having church, God's continuing to move on hearts, and they're going to continue to give. Come on, let's praise God for what he's doing in this service. If you need a touch from him, I challenge you. Worship yes. him. Yes. Lift him up. Magnify him. He responds to the praises of his people. How I Oh, how I love Jesus. Because, because.
some love back right now. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you are so good. You are so good. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. You be seated if you want to. Ushers, come. We want to receive Sunday night tithe and offering. We serve such a good God. We've done seen what can happen tonight. He's no respecter of persons. And he's not done yet. Talking about receiving an offering. Let me share with you something that I found. It's a different version in Malachi. It says, bring your full tithe to the temple treasury so that there will be ample provisions in my temple. Test me in this and see if I don't open up the windows of heaven itself to you and pour out blessings beyond your wildest dreams. Yes. He said, try me. Bring in the full tithe not a partial but a full god loves to bless and i say this and i just say this right quickly i don't want to kill no spirit but to lift somebody up caleb when he got him a job once the divorce and stuff like that was over i'm trying to help him with his finances trying to get him back on his feet i'm taking care of all of that he didn't direct me to for the first three or four weeks, I'd do whatever had to be done. The Lord prompt my heart, pay his tithes. So I started taking his check, fixing it up, paying his tithes for him. That's about two months ago when all this took place. Today, the Lord opened up this last week a door for a new job, making more money with benefits, things he didn't have. God will pour out his blessings when you give him what he asked for. Praise God. And we thank the Lord for what he is doing. Let's pray. God, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your love, your mercy, your spirit that we feel in this place. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done, what you're doing. We ask, God, that you take this offering that we're about to receive. We ask you, Lord, to bless it, to multiply it to the furthers of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. They're coming to you. Give and worship the Lord. Sovereign God. Sovereign God, you are lifted up. Still you're here with us. Blessed be your name. Christ, you were sacrificed, risen, glorified. Blessed be your name. We sing, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the one who saves us. Blessed be the name of the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the one. Who reigns and we bless the name, we bless the name, we bless the name, bless the, name the name of Jesus. Oh, 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 we bless the name, the name of Jesus. Sovereign One, Sovereign One, you are all we want for everything you've done. Blessed be your name, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, you are ever mine. All within me, Christ. Blessed be your name. We sing, we sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the one. Be the name of the name of Jesus, blessed be the name of the one who reigns. We bless the name, we bless the name, 
We bless the name, the name of Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. We bless the name, the name of Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, everything inside of me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and everything inside of me. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul and everything inside of me. We bless the name, we bless the name, we bless the name, the name. Let's lift it up. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul and everything inside of me. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul and everything inside of me. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul and everything inside of me. We bless the name, we bless the name. We bless the name, the name of we Jesus. We bless the name. We bless the name. We bless the name. We bless the name, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Lord, if you never do anything else for us, God, we know you're worthy, Jesus. God, and we'll bless you, Lord, at all times, Jesus. Hallelujah. Count on one thing. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. He won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Yes, I will let you hide. Always found me, yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. I'll sing for sing joy. For joy. When my heart is heavy all oh, my, oh, my day. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, oh, yes, I will. I count on one thing, I count on one thing, the same God that never fails, will not fail me now, you won't fail me now, in the waiting, the same God who's never late, is working all things out, he is working all things out, yes I will lift you high, in the lowest valley, oh, yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. I'll sing, sing for, for joy. joy when my heart is heavy all my day. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. All my day. Oh, my day. Yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. Yes, I, will. Yes, I, will. I choose to praise, to glorify. Glorify the name of all names. There's nothing, and nothing can stand again. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand again. I choose to praise, I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand again. Yes, I will. I just, yes, I will. Lift you high. I lift you high. Yes, I will. Bless your name. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. Sing for joy. Sing for joy. When my heart is heavy. Oh, my day. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. Lift you high. Lift you high. Lift you high. Lift you high. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. Sing for joy. Sing for joy. When my heart is heavy. Oh, my day. Yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. Sing for joy. Come on, let's sing the praise oh, one more time. Yes, I, I choose to praise. I choose to praise. To glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand against. I choose to praise. To glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can stand against. I choose to praise. To glorify. Glorify, glorify the name of all names. And nothing can yes, stand I will. Oh, 
Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will I praise bless you. your name. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. I'll sing for joy. Sing for joy when my heart is heavy all oh, my days. All my days. Oh, yes, I will. All my days. For all my days. Yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. For all my days. For all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I wonder if you would choose to lift up the name of Jesus together one more time all across this place tonight. Jesus, I love you, Lord. I magnify your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Let's stand together. Leviticus chapter 20. It's good to have Brother Eric with us tonight and others in the house of the Lord this evening. Thank you for being here uh, on this Sunday night. Thank you for coming ready to praise tonight. Feels good in church on a Sunday night. We welcome all of those that are watching online. Not sure which camera to look at right now, but you know we know you're there, and I appreciate you faithfully watching. I didn't know it the other day, and you know what, Miss Carolyn, if you're watching, thank you again for your good deed the other day. Um, we're Facebook friends. Not sure where exactly we made our first acquaintance, but uh, for they see now I meet so many people. I research the Facebook account, make sure it ain't some kind of fake account, but most of the time I'll accept friend requests because I don't know. We may have met, and I'm out of forgotten, and I don't want to offend somebody. And so I had no clue Miss Carolyn was standing behind me. Uh, she had actually just ordered. Apparently she had just ordered and then stepped over at the coffee shop and was waiting to uh, get her coffee or whatever she had ordered, tea maybe, I don't remember. And uh, I had went in there real quick just to grab a quick drink real fast to get back on the road. And uh, she walks up and she says, Hey, we're Facebook buddies. I'm going to pay for his drink today too. So Miss Carolyn, if you're watching, thank you again. She tells me she watches most every Sunday night. She goes to church somewhere on Sunday morning. And she said, sometimes I'll wake up and it's right at church time. She said, I'll just turn it on and watch you all and get something out of that service. So uh, you never know who's watching and who's participating in those kind of uh, situations. And it's good to have you with us tonight. I'm going to get right into the word of the Lord. Leviticus 20, verse 24. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. Now, I read a longer text this morning, not just too long, it's two verses, but tonight's only one verse. I want you to really look at this passage. You shall inherit their land. Now, we preached along these lines last Sunday night about the thread. And how that they were headed to the promised land when they went through Jericho. Well, this week, the Lord just prompted me, let's take a step back in the story. And let's talk about the promise that God gave them and how they ended up wandering in the wilderness for 40 years before they could inherit the promise of God. So I'm going to preach to you for the next little while. Title my message this. Killers of the promise. Killers of the promise. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm not going to kill the promise. Now say it like you mean it. Say, I'm not going to kill the promise. There you go. There you go. Praise God. God bless you. You can be seated tonight. Man, it feels good in church this evening. In the 20th chapter of Leviticus, God made a great promise to Israel concerning the promised land. The land of Canaan. He told them in verse 24 that you shall inherit their land. I'll give it to you so that you might possess it. Now folks, this was not a promise of a temporary dwelling that God was giving them. But this was the promise of a permanent homeland chosen by none other than God Himself for this special people. And He instructed them that, first of all, they needed to do some things. They needed to keep His statutes. In other words, if you can't obey, then you have no right to possess. Another one of those helicopter sermons. If you're waiting for the long runway, it ain't going to get there. All right, here we go. If you can't obey the statutes of God, don't expect to possess the promise of God. 
The same is true for us here tonight. If you want to obtain the promises of God, there are first some things that we have to obey. And I think it does the church good to be reminded of that even this very night. That no, God's love is not conditional. No matter who you are, where you are, what you're in the middle of right now, God still loves you. But if we want to take hold of the promise of God, we need to hear what the Lord says. It says, okay, this is how I want it done, and this is how I'm going to do it. The Bible says if we confess, he will forgive I have to obey then he will give me the answer to the promise but he cannot forgive until we confess somebody say amen there is a promise in the New Testament the promise of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost and the Lord here tonight I believe if somebody needs the Holy Ghost you can receive it tonight for even that promise to be fulfilled he says you first have got to repent of your sins that is the first thing you got to do so for me to receive the promise I've got to obey the statute amen the promise, even though the love of God is not conditional, the promises of God are. And it's up to me to hold up my end of the bargain. Quit telling God you're going to start praying every day. If you don't mean to, you're going to really do it. Quit bargaining with God and then when he comes through, you don't do your part. Well, glory. Be careful. Because you start reaping the benefits of not keeping up on your end of the bargain in response to the word of the Lord Moses so what he does is he says I'm going to get 12 men and we're going to go into the land and bring back a report of what they discover numbers 13 25 tells me that for 40 days these men traversed the land I wonder brother Cannon did the Lord take a year for every day that they they were in the land and, and make that to why they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. I'm going to go somewhere with this in just a minute. These men would wander around this land for 40 days. What did they do while they were there? They gathered information. And uh, they returned to the camp bringing clusters of grapes. Larger than they had ever seen before in their life. The report then begins very positive with a testimony that indeed the land is good. Well, ain't that what the Lord said? Duh. You know, it's a good land. This is a good place to go. The land does flow, Brother Andrew, with milk and honey. Now, I love milk. I don't necessarily care for honey as much, but, you know, it I wouldn't be a bad perk, you know, to live somewhere where it just flows everywhere. And as it was advertised, you know, the Lord said, I'm going to give you a land that flows with milk and honey. And, and, and so it was as advertised. You ever bought something that wasn't like they advertised? Boy, that's the biggest letdown, ain't it? You know, this will help you grow hair. I'm not going there. Okay. In, a, in other words, In other words, we're at the right place. We found the right location. This is indeed the land that God has chosen for us. But then the report takes a hard turn left into the land of negativity. And according to verse 28, all 12 of the spies agree that the children of Anak dwell in the land. Further, we are told that the children of Anak weren't midgets. They were giants. They were big guys. They were large and in charge. Anybody remember that statement? The young people looking at me saying, I don't know what you're just talking about. Each of the 12 men, they laid their eyes on them and had the opportunity during their sojourn in the land to size these guys up and to the point they probably began to feel inferior because they even made the statement, we were as grasshoppers. But notice this, they said, end how do you know what they were looking at you like? Quit trying to put the blame on them and saying, they looked at us like grasshoppers. No, you looked at them like giants. I'll keep pushing. And immediately, 10 of the spies 
begin to protest that there is absolutely no way that we as Israelites are going to be able to conquer this land. There is no way that we can unseat these giants from their land. And amazingly, they don't doubt that God had made them a promise of the land. Neither do they question if they went to the right place or not. However, they were so focused on the giants that lived there and they were willing to let the promise of God die in the wilderness instead of facing their giants. And church, we can intend to have revival in Humboldt all we want to, but until our intentions sprout legs and our actions match up to our intentions, revival will never come to Harvest Church. Come on, I'm preaching right now. When the church decides no matter what I've got to do, I'm going to win a soul. When the church decides no matter what I have to sacrifice, I want to have revival. That's when the promises of God are fulfilled. That's when revival comes. Somebody clap your hands if you believe that right now. I've come to remind us, Harvest Church, God's will and God's promises are not predicated upon those that might sit among us and do not believe. But the promises of God is for anybody that will say, I'm going to reach out and I'm going to take hold. Oh, come on now. God's promises are for those that are hungry. Has anybody come spiritually hungry on this Sunday night? You know what? I may have to work a little bit harder. I may have to sacrifice a little bit more. I may have to dig down just a little bit deeper. But I'm going to go after it because it's worth it all. And God knew that within that group of 12, there were two that had a different mindset. Oh, thank God for Joshua and Caleb's that will rise up when everybody else is cowering down. Oh, thank God for people who will believe when everybody else is doubting. Remember what I said last week? For every God has, there's a... Well, my wife was listening. (laughs) For every God has, there's a somebody that will step into your life and say, Really? Has God? And they boldly declared to Moses and Israel in Numbers 13, 30, let us go up at once, these two men said. Let us possess it because we are not just able. The Bible says we are well able to overcome it. Somebody needs to let the spirit of Joshua and Caleb get on you right now. I'm praying tonight their spirit will overtake us and that our needs will not stand in the way any longer, but our desire to take hold of a promise will push us to a place that we've never been before. Praise God. So what's the difference? Let's slow it down just for a second, then I'll preach hard again. What's the difference between Joshua and Caleb and the other ten? Everybody answer me. Did they go to the same place? Did they see the same giants? Absolutely they did. Here's the difference. The difference is in the revelation of giants that Joshua and Caleb had. And while the other ten chose to sit back and doubt, while the other ten saw the giants as obstacles and roadblocks, Joshua and Caleb saw a land that was promised to them by the almighty God and therefore they saw a land that wasn't just promised it was prepared for them I want you to notice this the word possess in this passage means to occupy it by driving out the previous tenants and possessing it in their place God said, this is a promise for you, and I want you to go possess it. A lot of times we want the promises of God, but we want him to serve it to us on a silver platter. Lord, bless me with the money, and he gives you an opportunity for a job. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't ask for all that. I stepped in it, didn't I? We want the blessings in our life, Brother Seaton. But we want him to bring it to my front door and leave it on the doorstep and say, open that door when you want it and it's there waiting on you. We want it convenient. That's not what this means. Possess means if you're going to get what has been promised, you're going to have to roll up your sleeves and go after it. 
you're going to have to get out the sword and be ready to fight for it because there are some giants that you have to conquer before you get to the promise. Folks, the promise may not be easy, but if you want it, you got to be willing to fight for it. And I'm here to tell you tonight, if you're in the land of un- if indecision, it's time to go ahead because God has went before you. He's guaranteeing the victory, but you got to step out in faith. And when you do, God shows up in your life. Does anybody believe what I'm preaching? right now does anybody believe the promises of God are real does anybody believe it's worth the fight tonight if you believe that clap your hands to the Lord and let him know I believe your word hallelujah I needed you to clap a little longer now I'm kind of getting out of shape let me drink this the word declares in Matthew 11 and 12 he says from the days of John the Baptist until now everybody say now kingdom of heaven suffereth violence keep that verse up there I'm coming back this ain't in my notes I'm going to tell you I I, I received I'm I'm just going to be honest with you I received a direct attack from the enemy right before church (laughs) a direct attack from the enemy that would contradict the word of God Somebody would take issues with things they had no business taking issues with they don't even know you or me either one really very well but they had an opinion I ain't even responded to the opinion yet. I'm letting the Lord give me wisdom before I respond, you know. And so I'm waiting on his back. I'm sitting there, and it gets in my head. And all of a sudden, the Lord brought this verse to my passage. I'd already gave it to them to put on the projection screen. The kingdom of God suffereth violence. You're doing something right when the enemy's coming against you. I've had people tell me, ever since I got in church, that old devil, duh. Yeah. Because you know what? As long as we're going in the same direction, there's no resistance. But when you start trying to go one way and he's trying to pull you another, it's obvious there's going to be some tension in your life. If the devil isn't fighting you, he probably thinks he already has you. A tug of war ain't near as hard when everybody just decides to let one side go. The rope ain't near as tight. The tension isn't there. There's probably a whole lot of people laying on the ground, but that's beyond the point, you know. Here's the deal. The enemy is going to fight the kingdom of God. But it's not for the church to say, well, the devil's just beating up on me. Stop it. You know how you beat the devil? You beat the devil. That means every time you get up and he thinks he can cause you to have a bad day, you put that smile on your face. And you say, devil, you may think you can make this happen. I told you this morning, 30 minutes of my day could have decided how bad that day was. But I made up in my mind, 30 minutes is not going to determine my entire day. There's still another nine hours that God is going to get the glory out of it. Somebody ought to hear me right now. I'm not going to let the devil have a day. I'm not going to let him have an hour. I'm going to give God my best. And I'm going to fight the kingdom of hell with everything that I have. I may not have a whole lot, but the enemy can't take my testimony and I'm going to share it with everybody that I can get to. And so he says, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. If we're going to possess our promise, we're going to have to do something. This is not time for games. This is not time for patty cake with Jesus religion. But we're going to have to go after it. With everything that we have. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let me move on church. If we're going to embrace the promises of God in this hour. We got to have spiritual courage to wade into the fight. Knowing God has made us a promise. And that God has indeed prepared a way for us. The determining factor of whether Israel would see the promise fulfilled or not. Was based upon their perception of the giants in the land of promise. Not one time do we find in Scripture did they dispute the fact that the giants were there. They were there. The children of Anak had dwelt there for years, and yet it was in this land of giant dwellers, God says, I'm promising you their land for you. This was not an accident. This was not something that caught God by surprise. Well, I really wanted this portion of land over here for my people, but look, there just so happens to be giants living here. Who knew, you know? No, God was not surprised by the giants being there. Who do you think put the giants there? 
The same God that created Adam, the same God that created the children of Israel, guess what? He created the giant. And he placed them there with a purpose. The same God that made you and I place the giants in the promised land. You see, church, he had a promise for his children that was bigger than his people. And therefore, he needed to put some giants in the land to develop and cultivate their promise. You know, if I'm going to grow grapes, I'm going to have to plant grapes. There's a revelation. And you know what? If you want, let me just ask, Brother George, how many years you had a garden? You've had a garden a long time. You and your dad used to do gardens together pretty much all your life, ain't it? If you want a good garden, you have to really work that soil. If the children of Israel were going to inherit the grapes, the size that they were going to inherit, somebody already had to be there to work and cultivate the soil. Here's what I'm telling us tonight. I'm done with that passage if you want to put the screen back up. Here's what I'm saying tonight. The Bible says the land flowed with milk and honey. How do you think it got that way? These giants had to be some serious farmers. It got that way because they were giants in the land. Clusters of grapes, it took two men to carry them. Who do you think they were grown by? No giants, no milk and honey. No giants, no back wrench and clusters of fruit. It was the giants that God used to prepare the promise for the children of Israel. But the problem then as well as now is many times we want the promise but we run when we see the obstacle that is standing there that God has used to prepare the promise. Come on. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You overcome evil with good, dear saint of God. Don't let the giants keep you from the promise. Our problem is we begin to look at ourselves and we begin to look back at the giant and we look at our insufficiencies and our limitations and our inadequacies and then we look back at the devil and we look back at him and say, we're no match for him. That's not the issue. The issue is the giant is no match for your God. Oh, somebody help me preach right now. I don't want to be a killer of the promise. I want to be a promise cultivator. I want to see God come through. I want to see somebody possess Possess what God has promised in your life. Somebody shout amen. amen. The Bible says they spent 40 days in the land. Babe, when I read this today, here's what I got to thinking. Who protected them those 40 days they were there? You're scared of giants all of a sudden now? Now they may have been scared in the land. But the same God that helped hide them then was going to be the same God that's going to help them overcome those giants. Why all of a sudden now we're going to look at the giants and go, oh, we can't have the land. Well, why didn't you leave on day one when you saw them? It ain't like a giant can hide very well. It's like us trying to hide behind a light pole. It ain't happening. You can't hide a giant. Not for long. These ten spies, we're going to let these giants rob them of the promised land. Who refused to look beyond the external circumstances they were facing? Many times, church, it's not the giants that keep us from taking hold and possessing the promises. It is our own unbelief. It's our own lack of faith that causes us many times to magnify the size of our giants. And shrink the power of our God. But I'm here on this Sunday night to urge us. We need to remain steadfast in our faith. If God has spoken a promise to you. Then you don't need to let go of it. If God has put a promise in his word. It's yours for the taking. I'm here to encourage somebody. You need to stand up. You need to stand strong. You need to put your back out. uh, Back up and stand straight as tall as you can. Because you need to understand. There is a blessing for you. There is an anointing for you. And God has promised it. But it's up to you to take it. Oh, don't be content to die in your wilderness. When God has told you, you can possess a promise. Don't be content to live beneath your spiritual means. 
when God says there's a blessing for you. Oh, you need to get an understanding of the giants in your life. There needs to be an awakening in this building tonight. You need to recognize the purpose of those giants. They are not there to stop you. They are not there to defeat you. They're there to put you in your place. They're there so that when you get through them, there's a promise that's waiting on the other side. There's victory that's waiting for you on the other side. If you'll make up your mind, I'm going to possess it. I'm about to close. Here's what we're going to do. What we need tonight is an understanding of the purpose of giants in our lives. Quit looking at your problems and crying about them. You know what? Crying over a big bill from the hospital ain't going to pay that bill. And it sure ain't going to make your nerves any better. You know what? Whatever's happening in your life, worrying about it ain't going to fix it. I've never worried anything into a better situation. You'll cause yourself to have stomach ulcers and high blood pressure in no time. And you'll be in all kinds of trouble in your life physically. You cannot afford to worry about everything. Now, that's easier said than done. I understand. I understand. Believe me. But, let me say this. We need to understand what is the purpose of the pain. Sister Warnicky, that that surgery... Once the deadening wears off, it don't feel too hot at first, you know. There's a little pain that's there. But it's a whole lot better after the pain goes away and you're able to fully move those fingers again. and You're able to do what you used to do with that hand. Sister White, you was in pain before you went to surgery. Same way with the hand. We're in pain before we go to the surgery to have the leg redone. And when you come out of surgery, oh, that first few hours is wonderful because you don't really feel it too much if they did their job right, you know. But when the medication starts wearing off, the pain comes back. And you know what they tell you? You got to get up. You kidding me? That junk hurts. You just redid my leg. What do you mean I got to get up and walk? That's going to hurt. Yeah, it's going to hurt. Boy, they're going to tell you, that pain is good for you. That pain's good for me. Yeah. Because if you don't work it, what they tell you it's going to happen? It's going to get stiff. And then you won't even be able to walk. And you went through all that pain for... We come to church and we say, God, I can't believe this is going on in my life. Brother Cannon, you got to sing the right song for me tonight. I ain't even going to move a finger because I'm hurt. You know the best way to work through your pain? To move. You think I ain't got a trouble in the world? When the devil attacks me right before church, I made up in my mind, I'm going to move tonight because I can't let this pain be without a purpose. I'm not going to go through trouble and forget there's a God that's still in control. And if I'll move, he will. If I'll move, God will move on my behalf. He inhabits the praises of his people. Oh, I think we ought to pause just a moment tonight and begin to praise God. I'm not going to kill the promise because of some pain. I'm going to praise my way to the promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, he said he's closing. I got to hurry. I will close if I'll stay in my notes. Here we go. Goliath was not put in David's path to defeat him. The Lord never intended for Goliath to defeat the Israelites. But who is it that brings Goliath to the valley? The Lord draws him to a place of confrontation with those people because they had hid for too long, scared of the enemy. And the Lord says, it's not my will for my people to cower in fear. 
And it takes a shepherd boy out of nowhere bringing some cheese and crackers to his brothers. To finally look at those adults and say, really? The kind of God that we serve and you're over here hiding from him? God did not put that, uh, that giant in his life or their lives to defeat them, but rather it was so that he would be glorified and that God would lead the Israelites in victory over their enemy. That's why Goliath was there. It was so that David wouldn't get the glory, but so that God would get the glory. And so David defeats the giant and the Israelites defeat the other giants and they reap the blessing. That was the purpose of the giant. Somebody in here tonight needs to follow David's lead, yeah? He looked out at Goliath that day and and he said, Goliath, you look pretty well equipped. You've got a sword. You've got a shield. But I've got something better. It's called the name of the Lord. I'm praying that as I preach right now, that a spirit of David would come over somebody. And you would look at your adversary. You look him right in the eye and say, you may come to me with all kinds of fear and destruction and depression and heaviness. But I come to you not in my own wisdom not in my own strength not in my own power but I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus I can't keep moving forward somebody stand to your feet and begin to magnify God come on it's going to take hold of you you got to take hold of it God's given me not the spirit of fear he's given me power and love and a sound mind Let's hurry, Brother Dylan. I'm going to run through some scriptures. Uh, to the giant of inadequacy, uh, somebody needs to declare, I can do uh, all things uh, through Christ. Uh, that strengthens me. Uh, to the giant of past failures and mistakes, uh, you need to declare Romans chapter 8. Uh, we know uh, that all things work together uh, for good uh, to them that love God, uh, to them who are the called uh, according to his purpose. You need to quote scripture to your giant. Uh, you need to declare the way more perfect. That's what Jesus did. He looked back at the devil and he said, I'm not going to play your games. I've got the word of the law. To the giant of loneliness, somebody needs to declare the word of the Lord that says, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. And with his stripes, I'm going to walk forward with his blood. Oh, I'm speaking to somebody tonight. Sickness and disease is staring you right in the eye. For Isaiah said, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised. For our iniquities, for the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, somebody shout, with his stripes, say, I am healed. Oh, somebody thank the Lord for his word. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, there's giants in the land. But I can be victorious over it. To the giant of your past sins, you need to look back at him and say, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he's long suffering to usward. Oh, is anybody thankful the Lord is long suffering? I couldn't be here without the mercy of God, I couldn't be here without the grace of God. But you need to look at that giant and say, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all, all should come to repent. Come on, I wonder what would happen if you would step out from where you are and say, I'm going to come to the valley where my giant is standing. And I'm going to say, I'm going to look you in the eye and I'm just going to call upon the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, step out from where you are. There's giants in the land. I said there's giants in the land. We don't have to sing. They can play music. That's all right. But there's giants in the land. And the only way I can get through my pain is going to be through my praise. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. I want everybody to go next to somebody and ask them, Say, do you want to be delivered? Ask him, say, do you want victory? Because you got to want it to get it. Come on, ask him, say, do you really want it? 
Jesus looked at the man and he said, do you want to be made whole? That seems like an ignorant question to ask a man that's laying there and can't move. But Jesus said, I'll do it if you really want it. I'm preaching to people in this room right now. If you want it, God said you can have it. It's a promise. You ought to begin to praise him in this house. You ought to begin to worship him. Come on, come on, don't look at your giant. Don't look at your problem. You need to look at the Savior. You need to look at the promise and begin to lift your voice and begin to praise Him. Come on, come on, that's good, that's good. Come on, that's good. Yes, 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 yes. I'm not looking at my finances. I'm looking at my Savior. I'm not looking at the diagnosis. I'm looking at the healer. I'm not looking at the addiction. I'm looking at the deliverer. (laughs) You say, but the enemy keeps on attacking me. Paul, just shake it off into the fire. You got to make up your mind. I'm not going to take the venom. I'm not going to let him hang around. But I'm going to praise him through it all. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. When I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony When I look back over my life And I think things over I can truly say that I've been blessed I've got a testimony When I look back over my life And I think things over Truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a taste of money. I want you to think about something right now. That problem that seems so big, your praise ought to at least match that problem. If it's a big problem, then just a hand clap ain't gonna do. If it's a big giant, then just waving a hand ain't gonna do. But I want complete victory. I'm not just going to leave happy, but I want to leave free. I'm not just going to leave with a good feeling, but I want to walk out of here in victory. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to lift your voice. Somebody ought to loose yourself in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, it's in the house. It'll happen through your praise. It'll happen through your praise. Oh, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. Truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. When I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. When I look back over. I think the old man I can truly say He's brought me all the way I've got a testimony When I look back over my life And I think the old man I can truly say I've been blessed I've got a testimony when I look back over my life And I think it's over I can't 
can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. When I look back on my life and I think